Hello, in this video I want to talk about how we can visualize um, the decisions or predictions that are made by a classifier. When we were doing regressions we'd often visualize this by drawing a fit line and the equivalent here is that we'll often, um, at least when we have two features, is we'll draw those two features on an x and y axis and then we'll uh, separate the area into two different regions, one where we predict um, uh, true and another area where we predict false. And so the, the, the function that we're we'll be using in Matplotlib is called contour f, and it can, and can do that kind of plot. So we want to evaluate CLS, and the idea is that we want to put in a bunch of different uh, values for, uh, for both sepal length, which I'm going to put on the y-axis, and sepal width, which I'll put on the x-axis. And so the way to get every combination of these, um, maybe most easily, is with a NumPy mesh grid. And the reason I'm using a mesh grid is that um, it creates some arrays with different combinations in exactly the form that I'm going to need uh, later. So it creates um, arrays and form needed for contour f later. And so let me just leave this comment here like that. And what is it trying to return? Well, it's trying to return two arrays. It's trying to return one, uh, which is um, one of my variables and the other one will be the other variable. So, so maybe I'll say um, I'll put my uh, sepal uh, width first and then my sepal length, just like that. And then what I have to do here is I have to have a range, right? So I'll have like um, range one and range two. And really what the mesh grid is going to do is it's going to give me every combination of these two ranges. So here I'll say NP um, A range, maybe I'll go from zero to uh, 0 to 10 and maybe do a 0 0.1 step and then the same thing over here as well. Okay so I have those two and, and let me just take a look at what these things look like. I see that both of these are a 2 by 2 matrix that are showing me every combination. So um, let me look at the other one as well. So these are exactly the same shape and the values in it are just giving you the, the, the coordinates right. So um, the first one is giving me the x coordinate, basically the sepal width, and the other one is going to give me the y, y coordinate, coordinate or the sepal length. And so, if I wanted to, I could um, I could then call uh, plt dot f, and this is taking three things. It has to have my matrix of my um, uh, x x coordinates, and it has to have my matrix of my y coordinates, and then it has to have something that says um, that uh, gives the color, right? And that can be some sort of um, uh, kind of expression, right? So I could say if I wanted to sepal W, and this will show me some stripes from left to right, or I could do uh, sepal L, and that'll show me vertical, um, or I could have some sort of mathematical expression, right, like this. And at each point, it's showing me what would happen if I multiply the value in one of these by the value in the other, so I can get these nice contour maps. Now what I'd really like to do is um, is to just have two levels, two numbers. Right? Let me just show, show you what this is now. Um, lots of different numbers. I'd like to just have two numbers here, basically one and a zero, um, that correspond to predictions, right? So my x-axis is going to be the sepal width, and my y-axis will be the sepal length. So I have to get all this data into a format where I can do some um, predictions, right? So let me, let me leave this here for now. And we come back to this. This is my my goal where I'm working towards. Um, what I would like to do is put these things in a data frame. So I'm going to say um, this will be my contour data frame. I'm going to say pd dot dot data frame, and my data frame has to have all of these things up here, right? Because I want to do predictions on it, and these are my x columns, and so I'm going to have something for that. Um, I may have something for that. And then I'll do my constant first. That's easy. That's just one. Uh, these values I can pull from, from these. Um, and so I can put this here. And then I could put um, up here, I could put sap w if I wanted to. Now, this is not going to quite work because um, these are those um, uh, basically square matrices. And down here, I'm trying to put all this in a data frame so I can do uh, my predictions. It has to just be a simple column. So I have to flatten these. So it's um, uh, just kind of one dimensional. 
And um, I can do that and then I can look at my CDF if I like. And I, I can see what is going on here is I really have every combination of length and width, and then I have my constant column. So this is in a great format for me to then do um, some predictions because I can just say it has everything that I need for my predictor, right? I can say um, cls.predict, just like that. And then I get all of these values um, right here. And if I wanted to, I could add those um, to that data frame as well. I could say CDF, um, I could say uh, predicted, maybe I'll just say a prediction. And, and I remember that was the, the pedal width is what I'm trying to predict. I can say, or I'm sorry, it was the category. Is it uh, Setosa or not, right? So that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I have that. And, um, and now I'd like to pr um, be um, going down and doing my uh, doing my uh, contour plot down here, right? So I, I can have this, and let me think a little bit carefully here, right? So if I have my set W, let me look at the shape of these. That's a 100 by 100, because that's what my range was. I was drawing over 100 numbers. This is a 100 by 100 matrix. This is a 100 by 100 matrix. This is also going to have to be a 100 by 100 matrix. Right now, it's just this long column. So just like I have to had to convert these matrices um, to columns with a reshape here, now I have to go in the opposite direction. I have to take values and then reshape this to be matching the format of these, right? So I can actually just use these uh, and say, well, my prediction should be whatever shape my X values are. And so that'll line up nicely. And so I can do that and now I can see, well, the two sides of this are going to correspond to a prediction of it being um, either um, a Satosa or not a Satosa. Let me um, plot those with a scatter plot on top of here. Um, I have my data frame here of all my original uh, flowers. I'm going to plot all of them. Ideally, I would just um, plot only the training data on top of this so I can actually have a better sense of how, what errors are made. Uh, but I only have like 10 rows of my, my um, testing data, and so I'm just going to plot the whole thing. So I'm going to say uh, dot plot dot scatter. And actually, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just separate this out. So I'm going to have something like Satosa uh, dot plot dot scatter. And then I'm going to have something like other dot plot dot scatter. And then those things I can get just with some filtering. Right? So I'm going to say Satosa equals data frame, uh, where data frame of uh, variety uh, equals Satosa. And then my other ones will be basically where it's not that. So I'll say where it is not Satosa. Okay, so what am I going to do down here? Well, I may say my x value is going to be, um, well, I was putting sepal width there, so I better put that sepal width on my x axis. And then my y axis should be sepal length. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do the same thing down here for a moment. And I see, okay, well, I have my decision boundaries, and then I have um, my two separate plots down here. I'd like these to all be on the same plot. And normally, the way that we've done things like that is we would say AX equals this, and then we pass that down below. But let me just show you quickly what the type of AX would be if I were to do that. It's this thing here, this um, quad contour set, and we cannot plot on top of that. So if I wanted to reuse the same um, axis subplot area, what I can actually do is I can say matplotlib dot get current axis, and that will give me an axis subplot that I can pass in elsewhere. Right, so I could say up here, I could say, um, uh, maybe I'll go down to the next line, I could say AX equals that, and same thing here. Um, so then they'll, they'll all go to the same area. So let me do that. And so I have all of these points, and, um, and, and so then what I'd like to do now is, um, well, it's kind of strange that it's not overlapping that boundary. Um, did I get my axes mix, mixed up? Uh, I did. So here is sepal width, sepal length. Okay, great. So let me let me just switch this back. So this should have been sepal length, and this should have been sepal width. 
and now I can actually see that makes a lot more sense how you can start to separate the ones that are from the ones that are not. And, and so to actually uh, make this work now, I should have the color be different in some way. So I'm going to have the Satosas be uh, red, and then maybe I'll have the other ones be, um, I, I, I don't know, maybe they can be gray. Right, so just like that. And so now I can start to see um, what mistakes will be made. I can see that there's one Satosa that is not going to be recognized as a Satosa because it's on the wrong side of this boundary. Um, I should probably also have some um, labels here. So I'm going to say like label equals Satosa. And then down here, maybe I'll say uh, label equals equals other, just like that. And so I can see what's happening here now. And, and so there's a couple steps to all of this, right? Um, maybe I can delete these extra things up here so I can have a minimal example. I had to create a mesh grid and that basically for every point, it, it, one grid had the X values and the other one had the Y values. Um, I had to reshape those to turn, convert them to data frame uh, columns. And that, that, at that point, I really had every combination of these in some row. Once I did that, I could add predictions for basically every combination. And then if I converted um, uh, my predictions back to the mesh grid format like these two have, then I could do my contour. And that's how I could create this map. Uh, and then on top of that, I could plot my scatter points and see what's happening. Uh, one last thing I want to do here, and that is... I want to try to do some polynomial um, uh, FETs. So just like we can use polynomial features for a regular regression, I can use those for classification as well. And so let me import some stuff. I'm going to say from sklearn.pipeline, uh, import pipeline. And I'm going to say from sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to say import polynomial features. OK. And so before, what did I have? I had, um, I just had a logistic regression like this with, um, with what, what was it? It was, um, I'm just trying to search up in my page for earlier. I, I think it was this fit intercept thing that I had off for all of them, excuse me. So I had that, this is my model before. And that's trying to be part of a pipeline, right? So now I'm going to say pipe equals pipeline. And the pipeline is going to be this list of stages, just like this. And so that'll be the first stage. Well, I'm sorry, that'll be the last stage. And then before that, I want to have my polynomial features, just like that. And um, then the other trick is, is that each stage of my pipeline has to be a tuple. And the reason it has to be a tuple is because I have to give it a name, right? So I guess I'll just call this poly and I'll call this one LR. So I have that and it's straight. And so just like before I could have my, um, uh, I think before I had something like this fit and then I had a uh, train of X columns and then train of what was my Y column? I guess it was, um, uh, it was going to be my pedal width, I think. So let me let me just copy that. It was like this, but it was pedal width. That's what I was doing before. And I can just replace my uh, logistic regression with this pipe. So let me try that. And I get some sort of error here. Unknown label type continuous. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to predict the whether or not it's a Satosa, right? It's complaining because it's continuous. So it's saying, hey, you're trying to do a classification on a quantity, which we don't do classifications on quantity. We do regressions on quantities. So what I'm going to say here is Satosa. Is it a Satosa? That's what I care about. And then I train it, and that's all great. Now, if I want to, I can come back here, and I can repeat these, um, these steps, right? So I could, um, if I wanted to, maybe I'm just going to move all of this up here. And then when I'm plotting this, when I want to look at those decision boundaries, instead of using my simple classifier before, I could use my pipeline classifier. And then what's going to happen? Well, that boundary line between them is just slightly more curved. It doesn't quite help. That red point is still on the wrong side. But um, you can see I can get different shapes depending on the complexity of, of my model and what I have in the pipeline beforehand.